How often do you see a work of fiction where it challenges the conventions that you are familiar with? Today, let's talk about one of Netflix's newest series fitting this description, Into the Night. Have you ever noticed how in a lot of movies or TV series that are of the horror variety, a lot of the elements that move the plot are in the dark or attack during nighttime? Be it a monster, a ghost, an evil entity, a crazy psychopath killer, all these elements become a billion times scarier when combined properly with a pitch black atmosphere and various other elements like sound and the jump scare factor. Oh, and by the way, if you feel like saying, Psh, the dark doesn't scare me. Well, I would say you're lying. According to science, it is in our nature to be scared of the dark due to the absence of visual clues that leads to a feeling of our survival being threatened. So take off your tough guy attitude, my friend. It's perfectly natural to be scared. In May of 2020, Netflix released a new Belgian TV series entitled Into the Night, and it definitely challenges that trope that we described earlier. Instead of running away from the darkness, the characters in the show are rather chasing it and wanting to go towards it. Why? Well, let me tell you a bit of a summary for the show a bit. Spoiler free, of course. So Into the Night tackles some kind of weird apocalyptic earth where everybody is trying to run away from the sun. Yes, you heard that right. Instead of running away to daytime to essentially weaken or fight the forces that are pushing them, the protagonist of Into the Night are instead dedicating all of their energies to escape it. Everyone is trying to run westwards just so they could escape the rising sun. What exactly are they running away from? Well, for some strange reason, our friendly sunshine has suddenly turned into a terrorizing death ray. In the show, a lot of fresh produce has become useless due to the effects of the sun. Even plain fuel is becoming unusable, which is one of the main driving elements of the plot, by the way. Since the story revolves around a group of people just trying to go someplace safe. Practically everything that's carbon-based is in harm's way. But the most important point of the show is the fact that everybody who gets exposed to the sun dies, and they don't just simply die. On the outside, the corpses look pretty normal, but when they investigated the insides of the victims, they saw that they are fried to a crisp. I know at this point the solution you have in mind is, wouldn't staying home solve the problem for them? What's the big deal? That's one of the biggest catches of the show. Nobody could hide in any safe place. Whether at home, in a bus, the radiation of the sun can get you. In fact, there was a part where at the hospital, people tried to cover the windows with black garbage bags. But that doesn't work either. Who thought that daytimes could get this scary? But I bet that's not what interested you the most about that short summary, didn't it? I mean, all of us that's gathered here are fans of science. Naturally, what we're interested to know is how accurate is the science here. Are we really ever going to arrive at a point where the sun, the source of all the energy that helps us live and survive, will become our number one enemy? One hypothesis that was mentioned in the movie was that the sun's rays might have turned to highly ionized gamma rays, which resulted from the star's polarity switching. Now let's focus on those two points, the gamma radiation event and the sun's polarity switch. Let's start with the first one. Sounds pretty scary, right? But what exactly happens to us humans if we ever experience a highly ionized radiation event? Before you start panicking about radiation, I think it's best to know that not all kinds of radiation can harm us humans. I mean, a lot of advances in medicine are accomplished through the help of nuclear physics, like the X-ray, CT scans and MRI, mammograms to name a few. At the right dosages, these things are nothing to be afraid of. Those memes going around social media about how your mobile phone can kill you with radiation has a really weak foundation. So the next question is, when does radiation become harmful to us humans? We measure this quantity in terms of joule per kilogram, or the effect of radiation deposited per unit mass. For the sake of the video, and since saying joule per kilogram seems to be a lot of effort, Let's just pertain to the single unit of it named gray. In the medical procedures we mentioned earlier, like x-rays and CT scans, the level of radiation used is only at the microgray and milligray levels. It could even get higher for cancer treatments at centigray levels. Pretty much as long as we stay at this level with a lot of caution, then we're safe. As long as we don't cross the one gray threshold. 
So what happens when you get exposed to that amount of radiation? Well, at 1 to 2 gray, it's still probably safe. It's just that you increase your chances of developing cancer over the next few years. At around 4 to 6, the digestive system gets messed up, but you'd most probably recover with appropriate care. At 8 to 12 grays, that's what you won't like to have. You'll experience a lot of vomiting. You'll feel extremely dried up. Your body won't be able to absorb nutrients in water, and there's no way to go except 6 feet under. Don't believe me? How about a little story? In 2006, a Russian double agent was poisoned by someone adding polonium to 10 to his coffee after his cover was compromised. He didn't die right away, but he definitely experienced the worst way to get there in the three weeks that he survived. His digestive system got real messy, experienced an unimaginable amount of pain, unable to walk on his own. In Into the Night, mankind experienced a different kind of exposure to radiation. If the bodies are being burnt to an extent where their insides get fried up, and that staying at home, which supposedly blocks radiation, doesn't work, that means that the radiation exposure is several times above the dangerous level, way more than what the Russian agent experienced. It's like the strongest nuclear bomb was dropped and none of mankind is prepared. Enjoying the show so far? We'd love to know. Leave us a like if you're having fun, and if you think we can still do better, leave us a dislike. Any input from you helps us become a better channel and make better shows. Now enough about the grim and dark stuff. Let's move on to the part that might be what everyone is waiting for. The reputation of the channel is mainly showcasing space stuff, so let's do that. Let's talk about the space factor of Into the Night, the event that led us to the intense bombardment of highly ionized radiation, the polarity reversal of the sun. According to the show, the sun likes to flip its polarity every 11 years, and this is not purely a work of fiction. A quick Google search will yield a lot of results from reputable sources in the field of astronomy. So how exactly does the sun reverse its polarity? Like all questions about astronomy, nobody knows for sure how. I mean, we have this gigantic problem of we can't just casually throw a mission to the sun to help us observe it actually. Here's to hoping that the future generations will find a way to accomplish this. However, we are not completely blind about this as we have a few theories that we are working on improving. One that we have is the Dynamo Theory. What this states is that celestial objects such as our planet Earth and the Sun generate their own magnetic fields as a consequence of a fluid rotating in the object. And it doesn't just stop at that. The fluid also has to be convecting and conducting, electrically speaking. This works through a principle in electromagnetism which we call Lenz's Law, where it states that a current that is in motion inevitably produces a magnetic field perpendicular to its direction of motion. Remember that experiment in your early school days when you were asked to coil a wire around a nail, then attach the ends of that wire to the poles of a battery, and to your surprise you effectively produced your own magnet? That's exactly how Lenz's Law is demonstrated. In the planetary scale, well, in our Earth's case, we know from our early geology lessons that the core of our home planet is molten iron swirling around in a single direction, and it wouldn't take a science lesson to remember how iron is the best conductor we can think of. Now let's move on to the Sun's case. It's easy to think of something solid that's causing this for the star, but this is not what exactly happens, as the Sun's surface is not actually solid. If iron is what's causing the magnetic field of the Earth, for the Sun it's the abundance of plasma, as it was in most stars. The plasma material is highly magnetic, and it rotates around the Sun, causing a magnetic polarity. So okay, what we'd love to know at this point is that do polar reversals of the Sun actually cause a gigantic event similar to what happened in Into the Night? Well, according to people who study the Sun, so far, nothing catastrophic has been recorded and would likely happen, although this causes a current sheet from the sun. You can think of it this way. Imagine you have a really soft sheet of fabric on top of your table. Okay, now imagine that you placed the tip of your index finger on the center and twirled it. You're bound to see some kind of rose-like pattern on it, right? That's how the current sheet somehow radiates from the sun. Consequently, as soon as this current sheet hits our home planet, it produces an aurora. I think it's a delight compared to what we discussed so far, 
That has happened to the cast of the show, isn't it? Another thing it does is that it deflects cosmic rays from supernova outside of our solar system. This might not sound like much of a big deal, but this greatly helps our astronauts and satellites hovering around our home planet. All of these don't sound that bad, right? The consequence we get is a sky show and a reflective power against cosmic rays. However, that's not to say that's all it will ever do. To reiterate, this is only what we have observed so far. The recent science fiction movies and TV shows accomplish such a great job of fishing out viewers is that there is always a possibility that this would happen. Although the events described in Into the Night are purely outrageous and out of this world, as per our current standard. I think what it brings to the table, the element that drives the thrill of the show, is the fact that we are free to ask the question, what if this happens someday? But that's just my opinion, guys. I want to know what you think. Do you believe that there will come a time that we as a species will ever experience such a catastrophic cosmic event from our very own sun? Let us know in the comment section down below. Let's have a discussion and maybe get ourselves prepared in case something comes up. I couldn't thank you enough for your time. If you love the show, why don't you leave us a like? Or if you think we still got room for improvement, leave us a dislike instead. Any feedback from you helps us in a lot of ways. Also, if you made it through several episodes of the show, chances are you love watching content like ours. So why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button? Or if you want to take that to the next level, click on that bell button too. We'll send you a notification whenever something new comes up. Until next time, guys, stay insanely curious.